Hi, and welcome to many training video sessions for Australian dairy manufacturers. My name is Michael Kalish. I'm your presenter today. And today we're going to be going over the essentials when considering electronic record keeping. We're going to be discussing uh, electronic record keeping within the context of Google Forms, which is Google's um, version of electronic record keeping. Um, but be aware, I'm only using it as an example. And because it's free, I thought if you're going to be paying for something, be aware of what you can get for free so your money is well spent. Okay. Um, so when considering electronic record keeping, there are four things you ought to consider uh, in that platform that you are investing in. One is customization. Uh, next is accessibility. Uh, and then trending and security. This obviously spells CATS. I did uh, choose the acronym CATS over SCAT. So uh, I guess I could have chose ACTS. But uh, today we're going to be talking about CATS and its importance to electronic record keeping. So let's start off with customization. We want something fast. We want it simple. And we also want it to give us some flexibility. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I mean in the next couple of slides. So when I'm talking about fast, um, I want pre-populated things. I want to be hitting check boxes. I don't want to be adding text all the time. Um, in this case, I have a place for me to put my initials. Uh, we'll talk about how we validate those, those initials as being real in a little bit. Um, but these are all the different kinds of questions we typically see across electronic record keeping forms. So there's short answer, there's paragraph, which provides you with a, a bit more space. There's multiple choice. This makes it really fast to, to fill something out. And so do check boxes. If there are multiple things that can be uh, checked to indicate that you've cleaned um, to clean them, for example. Next is a drop down. Sometimes that's um, uh, one that's preferred over check boxes. Certainly takes up uh, less space on a form. Uh, there are not every uh, software out there does this, um, but more and more do. It's the ability to upload a file. So if you're accessing an, an electronic form online, or th excuse me, through your phone, oftentimes you can add a file and it'll prompt you to take a photo or a video. Um, so that is uh, if you're cleaning something or you're identifying a problem, a defect, maybe at receiving of an ingredient, uh, it's really valuable to be able to upload a photo. Uh, next is a linear scale. We see this quite often. Um, in this case, I'm identifying its readiness for sale, just as an example, but normally it starts with one, goes up to five, and you define what, those ran that, what, what that range means. Um, next is multiple choice grid. Uh, this is just like above uh, with the multiple choice. Um, same with checkbox grid, but this is where you're getting much faster. So uh, this is where you, you have to essentially make many less clicks to communicate the same kind of information you would uh, when typing. When we're talking about flexibility, uh, I mean that if I see something or I want to record something and suddenly uh, the following questions are no longer relevant, you can skip around based on what your answers are to questions. That's called form logic. Uh, most electronic forms have this, and it's a really neat um, way to keep your forms lean and flexible. And next is simple. A uh, way of keeping it simple is by using photos or using diagrams. Here you can see uh, you can embed a training video into your form. So if there's somebody who's not sure how to perform their task, they can always defer back to the training video for how to do it right the first time. Okay, so uh, just a few ways of making electronic record keeping simpler for your staff. And I have worked with some companies where people may not be able to read English. If that's the case, diagrams and pictures are so important for uh, helping make sure that you're making safe food, or at least documenting it. Um, another really good feature to have is um, being able to require a question. I've seen a lot of forms submitted where I did not get the answers I, um, for the questions that I asked. So you are able to require that people provide answers uh, before they submit the form. Um, you can also create uh, what we call validation. And so uh, if you need a date or you need a number, um, you can require that the input is a number or a date, and that's called validation. So be aware of that feature um, in whatever system you go with. Okay, so we finished with customization on to accessibility. In this case, 
we want to make sure that um, whoever accesses our document, our records, are, is going to be traced. So uh, earlier I mentioned someone put their initials. How do I know? No, it was really their initials. So we want that traceability. We also want accessibility. We want access to be immediate and we want it restricted to the people we want to have access to our electronic record keeping forms. All right, so I'll take, take you on a spin on what that looks like. Uh, this, again, I'm using Google Forms um, just as an example. They have a gear uh, icon in the top right corner. This gear icon will pop open um, a setting box where you can indicate that you can require a, um, a sign-in. In other words, this is restricted to my domain, right? So if someone tries to take, if someone tries to access this URL, this web page, and they do not belong to my domain, they're not logged into Google in this case, um, they are unable to access that form. And by doing that, it will also grab their email address. So when they submit the form, it'll have not only a timestamp, but it'll also have their credentials. And so I'll know that their initial is in fact them. Um, this is a little box they'll see when they're ready to submit their form. You can see here it identifies the username and that uh, responses uh, will have recorded this username uh, with the submission of the uh, form. Okay, now what if I wanna send this form to somebody else, maybe outside of my company? If you're managing a recall, these forms become really valuable because you want people belonging to other organizations identifying where your product is and whether or not they're gonna send it back to you. So you can send it um, by selecting send. In this case, uh, we're provided three options. We're given an option to include it in an email. Um, we could also include it as a link and we could also embed it into our website. And this makes it immediately accessible. So remember when you're investing in something for electronic record keeping, make sure that you have these kinds of controls so you can open it to people outside of your organization or keep it locked within. If you wanna add collaborators, you can uh, have it, like I mentioned before, restricted to your own domain, or you can change that and go a little more granular, or you could uh, open it uh, to the public. Like I mentioned before with a recall, you might wanna open it up so people outside of your organization, maybe anyone on the web would be able to access it. Right? On anyone with a link might be more attractive for a recall for obvious reasons, um, but you do have these options. Um, people can also have access where they are viewing or where they are editing. So quite a lot of control uh, with this example. Let's move on to trending. So now you're collecting all this data. Well, we want to be able to trend it in a way that's automatic. We want to be able to share that information and we want it to be visual because that's what makes trending so attractive, right? So I have these uh, maybe five, 10, 15, 30, 100 employees that are filling out forms. Where does all that data go? It should only go in one place. If you're working with paper right now, you're probably familiar with collecting all the papers and then transcribing it into a spreadsheet. Or when you're auditing, you just leaf through all the paper. It's a real pain. So trending is huge when it comes to electronic record keeping as a benefit. And, um, and trending doesn't have to be in a spreadsheet, um, but it's obviously a great place to start. Here you can see there's a timestamp it identifies the email address of the person that submitted it along with the initials. Okay, so um, what about you? Maybe you want a notification anytime a form is submitted. Well, notification rules is a popular feature for electronic record keeping. You can get an email notification or text notification anytime a user submits a form, or you can get a daily digest. So a summary of those things at the end of the day, which is a great way to sort of automate these uh, alerts. Okay, when I meant trending and making it visual, this is what I have in mind. Here you can see the data is being um, automatically uh, put into a sort of visual, um, in this case, it's a, a series of graphics. Um, but you can uh, also, more than often, uh, uh, browse in the individual submissions. So in this case, you can see I, I'm looking at an individual submission made by one person out of three. Okay, now, uh, I, I mentioned before the importance of um, being able to have all this information so that you can share it. And the sharing features are just like before. Um, you can restrict it to your domain, 
But the nice thing is with a sheet like this, you can prevent editors from changing access and adding new people. You can also disable options to download, print, or copy for people who are commentators or viewers. You can see that in the very bottom of this, um, of this pop-out uh, under owner settings. Another really nice feature to have, because remember, once you give access to other people, you don't want them providing access to people without your permission. Which leads us to security. So let's talk about data security, device security, and then security related to our users. So I mentioned earlier that we are sharing our, uh, our data, we're sharing our spreadsheets, but I don't, want, I don't want people who have access to the spreadsheet to be able to change the, the original, the, the raw data that was initially submitted. So how can I protect that data but give them access to the spreadsheet? Well, I can make them a viewer, but if I want them to add perhaps a verification initial at the end of this, uh, after column P, I can just lock the data, the columns that are receiving the data. In this case, I'm highlighting all the columns I want to protect, and then I can select the range. I can choose who I want to restrict it to, and boom, I've locked the data. So any supervisor or manager I give permission to access this data is unable to manipulate the raw data. And that's a really important feature um, because you do want your data to be indelible. In other words, it can't be changed. Just like you wouldn't want someone to have whiteout at your facility uh, near a record. All right, so those are all the free things that, um, that I wanted to talk about. Um, where you start looking at uh, spending money, I know with Google it's somewhere around $5 per user per year, uh, per month, uh, but, uh, and, and there are different amounts of security you can get. I just want to introduce you to some um, essentials that you should uh, look for in whatever platform you choose to go with. This is the Google admin plat um, web page. I'm going to take a look just at device management and user management. Device management, anything you look for uh, for online record keeping should give you the opportunity to block or wipe a device or account. If people are using phones, especially personal phones, you don't want them to have your business information there, especially if they lose it or they decide to lose the uh, if they decide to leave the company. Um, you do want that opportunity to be able to wipe that account remotely. As for user security, every so often people are hacked, so you do want the the ability to reset passwords, and in this case, you can. So make sure that if you do invest in security that you have these two things available at your fingertips. And lastly, some people are concerned about uh, people manipulating the data. Maybe, maybe they're upset and angry and wanna get back at you and delete everything that you have. There are third-party applications uh, that can provide a backup uh, to uh, whatever it is that you have. So if you go with something like Google Forms, they exist. But you should definitely ask for this kind of security um, if you are investing in any kind of platform for online record keeping. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.